Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT RPT, season numero ocho, episode number 86. It is Wednesday, September 8th, year of our Lord, 2021. This your boy Chingo Bling, we got producer Rob in the building. Hey everybody, happy post-Labor Day. Happy post-Labor Day. I'm he- I'm back to work, man, ain't no more Labor Day for me. Uh, El Paso, you are the next stop. We're headed to Bart Reed's comic strip it's on airway boulevard you don't want to miss it i believe it's five hot shows coming in super hot new material september 9th through the 11th chuco town come fuck with your boy next stops brea california puro califa september 15th uh oxnard california september 16th i don't know if the recall when's the recall uh it's in about seven or eight days i believe and uh, yeah so that's prior well fuck Seven or eight days. How many? What date is that going? I'm gonna to get the exact date for you right now. I'm just curious if the recall is gonna be going through or during while I'm on stage in Brea and Oxnard, Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th, San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th, Irvine, California, November 3rd, Houston, Texas, November 5th through the 7th. But if I were to believe it, get your tickets now. Chingobling.com. Don't get sold out because live stand-up comedy. We don't know how much longer it's gonna be a thing. I mean, considering how freedom of speech is, considering how these uh, the Mu variant, the Delta variant, the Lambda, todos los pinches variants, way coming through our unsecure border, coming on them planes from Afghanistan. But you know what? I'm a marginalized person of color <laughs> who is oppressed, so I can say those things. Tuesday, um, September 14th. Oh wow! I so a week from today, and then they're probably gonna have to count all the mail-in ballots uh, a week after that. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Yeah, man. Uh, Newsome, boy, you full of shit. Anyway, uh, shout out to all the patrons, man. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. The patrons are like the nucleus of this whole movement, man. Uh, we're not just two dudes talking shit in a podcast studio. Uh, we are a, a, a mobilized audience that cares about the community. You know, dudes that want to be uh, good fathers, good husbands, um, you know, women and men that, that care about their families and their communities and uh thanks for tuning in and um you know being the most important part spreading the word man telling a friend people sharing clips and if you want to join get all the content all the premium content all the shows we have non-political shows as well uh we're trying to grow the network that's right this is a motherfucking network y'all that's right uh just go to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales new people signing up on the daily but if i were to believe it also shout out shell shock cbd get 10 percent off if you're curious about the imp- the um the inflammation powers of natural medicinal cbd head on over to shellshockcbd.com when you check out, just order, put your promo code CHINGO. You'll get 10% off on your order. They got everything from Delta 8, Delta 8 gummies, gummies with melatonin, CBD gummies, chocolate bars, uh, bombs, lotions, roll-ons, CHINGO de cosas, even dog treats with CBD for all the canine lovers out there. You know, we wouldn't leave canines over in Afghanistan. Absolutely not. That's not how we roll at this show. Uh, we also got new merch, y'all. Go pick up that new great Tamal Intelligence Agency uh, cap is very limited. Hit up chingobling.com, click store, y sas. I lo vas a ver. Last to cover today, man. Yeah. Last um, to cover. A lot going on. You, what's on the top of your head? I like asking you over the weekend, you know, now that we had a long weekend, I don't know if you had time to actually dig into Yeah, media. I was trying to, I was trying to keep politics at bay. I, you know, ever since, um, you know, I decided to go on, on social media and just put like, all right, y'all, I won't talk about, um, politics on here. You know, I got a clip where I'm going off on George Lopez. Uh, I wanted to post that real bad. Uh, you know, I'll be having an opinion on things. But, you know, this uh, Silicon Valley oligarchs, um, you know, we shit, we use social media, man. That's how we get the word out about our shows. And it's discouraging. I mean, actually, the political stuff, that's what be getting 200 fucking comments. That's where my engagement goes to the roof. But, you know, little butthurt lefties, little little Chicanos and shit want to be crying and shit. So for the sake of y'all, I'm going to leave y'all alone. Um, you just be hating on my page anyway. But it's just an experiment. I feel like it takes a while for the algorithm to figure it out because the What Did He Said page, and that's not like we don't post it on there. Of course we post nothing but that kind of content on that page. Mm-hmm. If you give it some kind of a, of a break, like I was saying, of like having to put fact check and missing context or a CDC tag or whatever, mm-hmm. it like kind of reorganizes itself. And now we'll see those stories getting back into like the thousands of views mm-hmm. versus like 60. Yeah, so uh, me and Rob were talking like, I don't even like being on social media. For somebody who's on there all the fucking time, yeah. I don't even like it. It's a whole other job. I'd rather not have to fuck with that. Like if I had just like a, 
you know, I mean, yes, I have a podcasting job. I have other jobs. But let's just say, for whatever reason, you could just run an ad on Instagram and it just does the work for you. People know you're coming to Brea, Oxnard, El Paso. And you don't have to be on there spamming people, acting a fool, putting on wigs and shit. Cool. Even better. So it's just one of those tricky things where it's like, you know, people are like, but we want, you know, but what happened to the... What happened to that one voiceover on you? B- bitch, you took me for granted, bro. <laughs> so I kind of just want to go ghost. I just want to disappear. Uh, but I tried to stay off the politics a little bit here and there. I saw the t- when you posted on TikTok, the people in the comments were like, no, don't, don't stay off. You know, don't stop posting about it. It was pretty funny. Well, yeah, a lot of people are like, that's the only reason I'm following you. Yeah, it was interesting. So either, either, either after this break, I'm going to just double down, go extra hard, and just let the fucking take the plane down in in fumes oh you know no seriously because it's like like if i could just delete i would literally delete my shit right now you know and then you're gonna be regretting it. like man now you gotta build it back up <laughs> like my youtube it's like well you gotta build it back up people don't even know you gotta build back better i'm just gonna let biden take the country down in flames and then maybe people will be like okay maybe we'll pay attention to what the fuck chingo had to say but it's like so much of this stuff goes over people's heads totally it goes over people's heads like you want to talk about the economy you want to talk about stuff that affects brown people black people yellow people purple people all people and it's like yeah but what has he done for rasa and it's like i'm trying to tell you why and uh, uh, not having a secure border is going to fuck us over in the long run when yeah. it comes to terrorism, uh, Delta and Lambda and Mu variants and fentanyl and just we don't know who's coming through there. But they tricked us and these globalists done tricked us into thinking that don't ask those questions, man, because you brown, you marginalize and, you know, you a sellout. You know what it kind of starts with? And I was mm. thinking about this over the weekend as I was reading a couple of things is people's inability to be curious or maybe their, their refusal to be curious mm-hmm. and then to come back and ask questions. There's not as many people asking questions all of a sudden, I feel like, than there were 10 years ago. Let's just say when Bush was in office, you know, not the nine, which were upon the 20th anniversary of 9-11. But when that happened, it was questions all over for everybody all the time. And then the thing started to happen. And now I feel like people are just like, what is it? Okay, for sure. No questions, no curiosity. And mm. that's just, that's one of the things that's making it so hard to get through to people is that they're refusing to just be curious and ask questions. <clears throat> yeah, that's a very good point, especially when it has to do with national security. Mm-hmm. Like you said, the anniversary of September 11th is upon us. I remember clearly. I was a grown ass man. I remember clearly when that shit happened. You know, I was like fresh out of college, like maybe 21 years old. I was in seventh grade. I remember too. Yeah, I was old as fuck. I was way older than you. But um, thanks for rubbing that in, bro. <laughs> but basically, man. Um, Salt to the wound. But yeah, but it, it hits different, right? If yeah. you're 21, you're working at a huge bank uh, campus, right? It was Citibank. So I was in the mail room, basically, right? Yeah, with, with the mail and shit. All yeah, yeah. I don't think pe- I remember the story. So basically, man, um, a lot of the ladies who worked there, they had husbands. You know, San Antonio's a big military town. Yeah. So they had a lot of family that worked somehow on base. They're like military wives and girlfriends, and they're nervous. Like, oh, we about to go to war. This is World War Three about to pop off. And they were off by how many years? You know, World War Three now about to pop off. Like in Pakistan, it, like in India. No, nah, it's about to pop off. Yeah, we don't, you know... We're talking to the Red Pill Tamales audience, so they get it. They want to. They they they're curious. Yeah. They they want to know. They want to know how to manage their lives. They want to know. Hey, do we invest in gold, precious metals? Like, do I get an electric vehicle? Do I stay with petroleum? Like, what's up with these microchips? I heard there's a shortage. General Motors complete just halt. Put a complete halt because of the microchips. We've been telling y'all the South China Sea, Taiwan. That's like Silicon Valley over there. Our economy and our national security depends on those microchips. Now with this fucking debacle in Afghanistan, that shit's about to spill over into Pakistan. Pakistan going to put pressure on India. India was almost like MAGA country. They're like Trump. You know what I mean? They're populist. Mm-hmm. and it's biggest democracy in the world, I think. Yeah. And they, billions of people, they wanted to step up to China. They wanted to, um, you know, grow and, and pick themselves up by the bootstraps, right? You know, because they got the social class system over there. But their neighbors with China, India's an ally. Long story short, the anniversary of September 11th is upon us. And because I am doing a political fast from my social media, just so you motherfuckers can miss me. Um, when shit hits the fan, 
And everybody else is like, oh, my God, how did we get here? And people posting shit. Oh, my God, prayers. Remember this. Remember that. Oh, my God. What about the people of here? Bitch, it's shit happening right now. Pray for Australia. Pray for Paris. Like, y'all not paying attention to these vaccine passports. Uh, uh, the mainstream media got y'all so fucking brainwashed that, like, you know what I mean? Like, y'all are like, oh, my God, déjalo. Newsom's doing a good job. Oh, my God, déjalo. He got you know, 17 times the amount of normal Bay Area restaurant, you know, for the PPP. Like, this motherfucker came up. Uh, George Soros is putting money behind his shit. You got Disney, all these Netflix CEOs. Everybody named Mama. All the big elitist globalist people want to keep Newsom in. And he's having, like, private gatherings, like, private campaign gatherings, whereas Larry Elder's, like, literally having marches and yeah. going to Capitol Hill. Yeah, voice of the people, you know. Dude, but, um, it's, yeah, okay, all right, we got to take it. We, yeah, I want to get back to I know, your I'm jumping around. Yeah, well, no, I want to get back to your 9 11 story, but I also want to like, I want to bring the room back down a little bit. And I got to tell the audience that sometimes I feel like I got to come in here and be like the voice of somewhat moderation to kind of bring you down a little uh -huh, bit because uh -huh. your blood pressure is pretty high right now. Yeah, you can tell. I can, I can tell. Mm -hmm. It's coming through the mics. I think people are either laughing. I need to breathe. Yeah, we need to. What, you, did your watch ever tell you to breathe? Are you wearing it? Of course no, you're not. Dude, it. I, no, dude, I meant, look, I had to get up. It's okay. I had to get up super early. I lost my headphone case, actually, but I had to get up super early. I had to get my 13-year-old to school way in Pearland. I texted her last night, have all your shit ready tonight. Mm. Have your shit ready tonight, right? But that's what happens when your kids are back and forth. They got different rules at the mom's house. Anyway, so you're going to bring the room down and uh, redirect. Because I'm like an AR-15. You got to aim me, player. You got to aim me, partner. I can only do what I could do if with a good... <laughs> you know somebody aiming me all right so to, to bring the, to bring it down a little bit let's just go back to what we were talking about pre-podcast it's a little <clears> less <throat> less political but still relevant is social media right mm -hmm. being on it less you know but mm -hmm. the cool thing about the, the podcast growing is that like it's going to serve all the purposes right it's going to serve mm -hmm. the purpose of getting messages out getting information out yeah. getting entertainment out mm -hmm. and selling out shows <clears> as <throat> this audience grows right and you, then you can be like the uh, who's the fucking guy? Will Ferrell or even Adam Sandler, who they're like, fuck social media. They don't even use it. And they could be using it to their benefits because they're, you know, more so on the camp that gets favored mm. by big tech anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes back to the Oh, I'd love, even Cat Williams don't even fuck with social media. So I'd love to get to that point. Yeah. Um, like if somebody, I guess it'll take a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. But I think I can't just delete my shit because I would still need it in order to run ads. Of course. Okay, so I'm not going to delete it. But, um... Somebody else suggested, like, just uh, divvy it out. What they say? Delegate it to your team. Let them be the ones fucking with it. Yeah. And it's like, eh, it'll probably not sound like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it won't be really spontaneous. Maybe it'll be pre planned I don't know. It might be like a generic photo with a approved generic caption. You know, I'm not calling my team generic, but we've tried it several times. We've hired teams. Like, oh, I'm so happy. I don't have to fuck with this shit. Okay, let me ask you this. We got, we got to get a little bit non-political for a little bit here. Right. What is your favorite type of thing to post? Pre twenty twenty on social media. Pre twenty twenty. Um, what was your favorite type of content to post? Like shit. Okay. Well, obviously, I mean, if you have like a dope ass skit or something or a character, um, that's usually you know, especially if it gets results. Like if people get to talk and they're quoting stuff, um, that's always cool. You know, you just gotta structure your life differently, I guess, so that you are constantly in that mode. Of making sketches and skits and I stuff. I guess, yeah. I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. All right. That's a good answer. Do do you, do you we need to get you to the point where you can just do more sketches and not worry about the other stuff? Here's my thing over the weekend. All right. Let me just say this yeah. to set, set the landscape here. Yeah. I've been talking about... I talked to my, my dad about this because we were having a conversation about something. I was talking to Don about this. We talking about the kids in our life or whatever. I was like... Too many of us right now with so much noise going on aren't focusing on the path to the solutions. I said, what's the issue? What are we talking about? What, what's the, the point of contention? What is the whatever? And let's figure out the path to the solutions, all right? Mm -hmm. I don't care about all the little minutia in between the problems or the issues or the controversies yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what's the path to the solution? And let's uh -huh. only focus on that. So the path of the solution to, let's just say, you making sketches and you making fun content, what's the path to that solution? And everything else needs to get figured out as well. Well, I mean, that's if that's the solution. Because you might be back at square zero, where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you made all these fire-ass sketches, and it's like, nobody sees them. The algorithm doesn't let nobody see them. Mm -hmm. It's like, they want you to post political shit, because that's when you get 100 comments calling you crazy, and then 100 comments saying, finally, somebody's speaking up. Yeah. 
So, but it's the power of the people again, right? Like, it's not even on the on the today's notes. But I was listening to uh, Bannon talk about the ProPublica uh, article mm -hmm. about how because of his podcast, he's literally yeah. trending number one. The people are organizing, you know, trending where on Twitter, really? Yeah. Okay. As far as that article and, and his um, wow, but, but obviously, did you listen to the yeah, news? Yeah, it's basically saying that that he he was uh, urging people to uh, go be uh, what are the the small uh, council? It, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like um. It's local committee organizers of sorts. Yeah. It's like, uh, I have to, I'll look up the phrase. But but yeah, it's uh, the, the article's titled, if you guys should read it, it's, it's interesting. Heating Steve Bannon's call, election deniers organized to seize control. <laughs> Dude, and election then Joy Reid went off in the fucking dumbest way. To organize, uh, to seize control of the GOP and reshape American politics is the, the article. But um, yeah, it's all like local elections, local school boards, local canvassers, all these things that usually aren't known for like conservatives to do. They're all starting to move. Like he said, once school started, like people are now they're like, okay, this is enough is enough. Yeah, it's basically basically the whole topic that Steve Bannon covered is uh, I guess he went kind of viral because his podcast is so big mm -hmm. that he was encouraging people to basically, hey, all the MAGA folk take over the Republican Party like it's a fucking carcass. Eat it up from the inside, mm -hmm. basically. And the reason people on the left are panicking you know, your um, Chris Hayes and all these people, MSNBC, is because they're like, they're telling you straight up to your face, you know, th these are people that think the elections were tampered with and they think, you know, Trump is the rightful president and, and these are crazy people and y'all better wake up because this is what they're about to do, basically, right? Yeah. So he's basically saying, hey, y'all got power. Um, that's what they're saying about y'all. Start to act like it. <laughs> yeah. And the point of me saying that was that the same thing's going to go for, for this content. Like this podcast started from zero and now we have, you know, tens of thousands of monthly downloads, right? Okay. That same thing has to apply to everything else that's associated with it. So the people that are within, not just the Patreon, but just listeners, like if you haven't joined yet, we hope and urge that you do. Yeah. But if you're listening to the show, at least, you know, putting out five different pieces of content on an audio format and some of, most of them also being on YouTube, those people that come within here are going to help everything outside grow. They're going to hear about the yeah. Instagram videos. You're going to hear about the sketches. That's where it's all going to come. They're up like, from. oh, this motherfucker got a YouTube. Yes, we have a whole new YouTube. Yeah. This is the grassroot mo oh. grassroots movement of what you and Tripoli were talking about, which we're working on getting that bonus episode to put on the RPT feed on the Patreon only to keep it behind a, a paywall for by Sam's uh, request. But mm -hmm. it was all about people, right? It's, it's about the small grassroots stuff that went from the, the original, you know, the Molly King pin to the 180 that you made, you know, mm -hmm. going here. And same thing with his audience. Like it's all grassroots, like the Steve Bannon mm -hmm. article. It's all like we the people type stuff. <clears throat> yeah. So I don't know when I'm going to be vocal again on social media. But I mean, my story be lit. I can't have myself on my story. I still share shit. That but, should be in your bio. Like I live in the stories. Yeah. Something. I don't know. But like I'm literally just going to have pictures of me just sipping tea, minding my business while the fucking world explodes. <laughs> like when y'all going to start being like, hey, man, did you hear what the Afghan refugee people that were unvetted did in my town? I'm going to be here like this. Sipping my tea. Hey, man, did you hear what happened at the border? And I didn't know the border. I didn't know they lost 5,000 out of the 15,000 kids. I didn't know this happened on Biden's watch. Why didn't the news tell me? And I'm going to just be sitting there sipping my Dude, fucking tea. That would be a funny type of post. Like, we take headlines of stuff we've talked about, and then it's just you sipping tea. Sipping tea. Minding my business. Minding your own Being business. peaceful. Meditating. Yes. Oh. Um. <laughs> That would be a trigger like a mofo. Yeah, just what it'll say in the caption, like the Biden administration lost 5,000 kids. Yeah, like the, the caption. They don't could, know where they're at. Exactly. That could, they could go further into detail, but the picture itself would be like whatever the, like that fucking headline would be that would get people to click on it. You know, the clickbaity mm -hmm. shit that, mm -hmm. you know, BuzzFeed always posts or whatever. Oh, yeah, I might need a little, little photo shoot. That'd be funny. Yeah. Okay. Just like cafecito time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Again, in a perfect world, I wouldn't have to be on there. I wouldn't have to be on there. It's just one of those catch 22s where it's like, you kind of got to be, bro. You're not, you know, you're not at this level where you just hire some fucking media team and you're just on a yacht chilling. And it's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't look at that. I don't even need my phone. Yeah. The fuck I need my phone for. I ain't got nowhere to be until we shoot this HBO thing. I ain't got nowhere to be until I got to get on stage in El Paso. Yeah. Maybe, and, yeah. maybe those sketches also serve a dual purpose. Like we're talking about you enjoyed doing that, right? Maybe the, the sketches also serve as and add for upcoming shows so that we use it for a dual purpose. Like you're, you're having a good time making the funny sketches and videos, but those are also being purposed as ads for the cities you're going to. 
Wait, say that one more time. Make the sketches, but use them as ads. Yeah. So okay. it's okay. either like either subliminally or just ob- <laughs> obvious. Like it, it's revolving around maybe a city you're going to or tour date. Yeah, I want to have I want to have Theo Juventino roast El Paso. I just haven't had a really a chance. <clears throat> that to sounds come great. Back here. Yeah, and then have him roast it. And then, um, but since that one's already coming up, and we have an ad rolling for that. Maybe yeah. you do them for a future show, and use that like just dual purpose, you know, the content. <laughs> Hubeck can roast Governor Newsom, but then lots of Raza fucking oh oh love. They wouldn't be going to your show. They anyway, love though. Newsom and they love George Lopez. Yeah. So, all right. So the plan is, I'm gonna just shut the fuck up, let the world burn, and mind my business, and then let y'all figure it out. So all the lefty Larrys want to be hard headed and call people coconuts and sellouts. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm not gonna bust a blood vessel over y'all. Um, this is what the fuck, you know, elections have consequences and the more you get fucked at the gas pump, the more your taxes go up. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's on you, baby. That's on you. Cause I'm not finna get burnt out over y'all. Um, you know, you know, the thing with touring and you're dealing with politicians, you never know when they're going to be like, oh, we're going to use this fucking Lambda as an excuse and we're going to shut down bars and clubs and restaurants or whatever. Right. And then. And then there you are again. You're like, oh, well, fuck, I can't go to California. Or that got pushed back again. It's just a, it's really just a matter of time until a politician uses some kind of crisis or danger. Like, oh, there was a, uh, a, a bomb threat. Mm-hmm. Or we, oh, they said they shipped some anthrax over here near the capital in Sacramento. Or some shit, right? Next thing you know, we're on high alert. Uh, uh, what is it? State of emergency. Everything's shut down. And then you're back at the mercy of like, well, okay, well, fuck, B- build back better. New normal. You can't be in crowded places. So we'll see. <laughs> I don't know, bro. As I try to bring it up to him. No, man. it's because because it's one of those things where it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, if you were going to more cities, because there's a bunch of cities we ain't even had a chance to go to yet, yeah. right? But it's like, what's the point of filling up your calendar with all this stuff? It's just, it's so like, some people are just now getting comfortable being around others. Mm-hmm. I see people walking around with two masks on by themselves outdoors, like that fresh air going to get you. People in their cars by themselves. I don't understand the shit. It's just, it, you look at these people, they're in a car by themselves wearing two masks, and you think to yourself, where are you getting your information from? Like, we are in September of 2021. I have no idea. What are your sources? What are you basing this off of? Like, seriously, wh- who you talk to, where you getting your info? They're probably like, I watch the evening news. Of lo- course. Local. When I get home and it's scary and it's real and you Trumpers are, you, he downplayed it, bro. And that's why we had 600,000 people die because he downplayed it. Word. <laughs> that's what happened. This man downplayed it. Now everybody's dead. Let me, let me so two, two points to that. Yeah. Don't you kind of also feel bad for those people? Yeah, it's a terrible existence. It's a, it's exactly, it's a terrible, miserable terrible existence. existence. Yeah, but that's what they do. Like that's they, they go wherever they go. Where move the whole thing, get comfortable. Come on, screw yeah. up. I see me. This, this is your show. I start? Yeah. I want to make sure they can see me though. Um, so yeah, that's a terrible existence, right? But that's the only place they get their info from, and they're forming their 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 new identity in the 2021 world based off of Joy Reid and Don Lemon, and that's it. They haven't ventured off well, into independent yeah. journalism. Well, that's the thing that we've been saying since the beginning. Your opinions get assigned to you based on the media you consume. That's why you got to kind of see how different people frame shit, how they spin shit. But even with that phrase alone, your opinion gets assigned to you. Uh-huh. If you say that to a group of They'll people... They'll be like, no, I came up with that on my own. Exactly. It, 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 They're like, I'm pro-choice on my own. Yeah. but it, So there has to be a breaking point, right? And everybody reaches that at a different point. Like when you were talking to Sam, like it took a certain thing for you to be like, wait a minute. Yeah, these motherfuckers are lying. For example, they're going so hard trying to frame ivermectin as like a, there's overdose, like they're lying, talking about Oklahoma hospitals didn't have room for people with gunshot wounds because Dude. these all these ivermectin uh, overdoses and they calling it horse dewormer. Y'all going so hard on the ivermectin that I'm convinced the shit works now. And Just I, for that, I'm going to get more. <laughs> and I brought up Rolling Stone last week on an episode and other uh, media publications about how not trustworthy they are, right? And then mm. yesterday, the fucking Rolling Stone article was completely false about gunshot victims can't make it to hospitals because they're over, you know, ran mm. with fucking overdose things of ivermectin. It was completely false. I was working on the rap yesterday. Um, I had my little notebook out when I was journaling. <clears throat> and I don't remember all the lines, but it was something like... Um, 
um, some of these, the, it's a work in progress, but it's something like, you know, I talk economy known as political rants, just an ivermectin and medicinal plants. You know what I mean? Just going on about like, yeah. like I want to drop a freestyle on these motherfuckers and uh, call that shit ivermectin. You know what I'm saying? Like, might have to have a code word for it. Though. I know that 2021. I, 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 I dude, I, I challenge YouTube or fucking iTunes just to see. Like, I'm gonna drop a rap, name that bitch Ivermectin Freestyle. I just got it from Reynosa. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, just call it that. Just got it from Reynosa. You don't yeah. have to tune in and know what the fuck you're I talking mean, about. I mean, think about that, y'all. How the fuck is 2021 and you can't say the word of a medicine in a rap? Like, these other rappers talk about selling dope and killing each other. I can't reference a fucking Big Pharma goddamn product. Here's the thing, though, man. I mean, I'm assuming, right? We don't know what'll happen if I, when he, I upload it. I keep talking about, you know, I, I reference this pendulum that I feel like is swinging in the other direction. It's almost as if one side has, has played all of its cards. You know, it's played its best hand, and it's still reaping the rewards of some of the benefits of that great hand whether it was you know we'll call it the lockdown and the changing of rules last minute for elections yeah and market lies. blah blah blah, blah mm -hmm. all this stuff right the cabal everything once you've played your hand and the people catch wind of what you've been doing maybe they find out you've been counting cards you know maybe they find out we've only been in eight months and Exa everything's going to shit exactly uh -huh. the other side starts to wake up as we say right or the hand of the opposing you know opponent which let's call it the right they start to get better cards because more people are participating and mm -hmm. the things start to change right uh I, the, the, like capitalism right the market decides if if something makes money they're gonna roll with it and up until this point everything that's been put in place seems to be making enough money for the big players to keep this narrative going mm -hmm. it gonna it's gonna come to a point where Stadiums aren't going to be, you know, there's going to be no athletes. There's going to be, or rather, there's going to be no fans for athletes, right? You can't shut down stadiums again. Even athletes getting fired. You're right. A jab, You're right. right. So that the team's going to suck. Who's going to go see a, a shitty team, right? All jabbed up. Sorry, yeah, boys. exactly. And then what advertisers are going to want to advertise for a, a game that's nationally broadcasted with well, nobody there in, watching? I mean, if they want, if communism is what they want, then they have no problem. <laughs> but that doesn't benefit them in the a corporation yeah, yeah you, i don't know man it's like the parent 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 i mean you would think though based on your theory you would think that by now a league would have put their foot down right and say hey 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 i'm not we already did the bubble i'm not gonna force jab everybody they did the ufc did it I, they're the only league well they're the ones that i would argue fought back they did what i'm saying is why the fuck the nfl and the nba why? Because China got NBA by the nuts. Exactly. You watch a goddamn NBA game, you watching propaganda, bro. You got a bunch of brainwashed players, and they told them, like, hey, LeBron, you can shit on America, but you better not say shit about China. Yeah. Hey, you a coach, you a manager of the Rockets, don't say shit about Hong Kong, my G. Oh, you over there, you want to run your mouth by Taiwan? You call Taiwan a country? Bitch, this the CCP's league, ho. You gonna sit your motherfucking ass down, get this jab, and shut the fuck up. And who's kind of stood their ground more? I would say baseball stood their ground more, a even though bit. they faltered a bit as well. Boxing, hockey, soccer, they've stood yeah, their yeah, ground yeah. more. Mm -hmm. So all the, I mean, this, this fucking, this idea of a global communism United States doesn't play in the favor of these big corporations in the long run. All they're doing right now is playing with your emotions. They're hot potato Yeah, it. But, but think about it though, dog. NBA probably makes more money off China than they do off us. NBA does, but mm -hmm. that's just, that, that is a yeah. league. The, the NBA and the NFL, I don't know where their future is going. Yeah. They're getting too fucking woke for me, bro. A hundred percent. And... Yeah, so there's two out of, let's say, six big players. People watch sports, right? People that tune in for that type of entertainment are the type of people that these politicians need to vote for them. They're the everyday working class people that go to work. Their forms of entertainment are live entertainment, sporting events. We're taking the family to a ball game, whatever. You can't keep shutting that shit down and expecting these people to not realize. Or then if you don't have any sporting events, you have nothing to do with your family. Okay, then I'm going to just turn to finding out. Then I'm going to get curious again and I'm going to ask questions again. And then they're going to start playing to their emotions and they're going to hot potato it back over here. And that's all it is, you know. And, and then in the, in the midst of all that, we're still going to be arguing, but it's going to be less about everything be, being communist and taken over and more about you're right or I'm wrong or who's right or who's wrong. And it's back to like America as usual, if that makes it's sense. It's like they cranked up the heat, man. It's like the globalists showed their face. Like yes. I, that's why so many people woke up in 2020. Where it's like, we never thought that somebody will argue shutting down our whole economy, shutting down our whole way of life over 
you know, you don't want to call it the wrong thing. It sounds like you downplaying right. a very deadly thing, right? That was made in a lab by you know who, funded by our money. But it, it, it's like we never thought it'd get to the point. Like, damn, look at Australia, bro. They People getting fines and you got an app now where the government texts you and you got to use your facial recognition, upload a photo, geolocation, prove you were there. They got people already in those camps, you know. And I saw a video yesterday where the guy, the guy was shooting the. Video. I guess you know you keep your stuff, like you keep your phone. You have internet and computers, which is weird, but whatever. And he's just like, we're just waiting. He's filming with his phone. Did you see it? Like we're waiting for them to feed us. You know, you're kind of like a dog when they're ringing a bell, just like waiting for the food to come. And they're sitting, kind of like a, a like they're all like portable buildings, and they're just on their little porches. Like, Why? Because they for tested them. positive, or I what? guess yeah, or they broke the rules. No, I think because they tested positive. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. So, so my point is. It's like the Uniparty, the globalists, um, you know, it was the biggest, what was it? The biggest transfer of wealth upward. Right. Like the billionaires got richer, the poor got poorer, they squeeze in the middle class. Um, you know, the CCP's ways, China's ways are coming over here. And then again, that kind of stuff, you have to do it in cycles, right? You can't do it all at once. So we're talking about, I don't know when the last time that phrase, the biggest transfer of wealth happened. I don't remember when the last time that phrase was used, but let's say that, you know, it happened 10 years ago, maybe after the financial crisis in 08 or something like mm -hmm. that, or, or yeah. longer than that, tw whatever it was, 13 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now we're hearing it again. Okay, well, that's it. You played your hand, you turned up the heat. This can't happen again for another decade or two, right? In the meantime, though, people can't just take what's being presented to them at face value, and you got to start asking questions, and you got to be curious. And I think that's what they're doing. They just squeeze us too too hard too fast to where people are like, whoa, 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 hold on, man. What do you mean we locked down? Yeah. And people were like, wait, why are they letting these cities get burned down? Why are these mayors not asking for help? Mm -hmm. Why is this kind of rioting okay? This rioting ain't. Why are they blaming all cops? Wait a minute. We defunding cops? What, yep. What's up with that? And I know there's a lot that needs to be fixed with our policing system. Of course, there's been a lot of corruption throughout the years. You know, people planting fake evidence and, you know, so on and so forth. But... I think the left just went so cuckoo crazy that people were like, I think I'm a righty now. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think I'm a righty now because the left done left me. And it just makes sense, right? And Sam said it too on y'all's episode, like common sense has left the conversation. Like, And I bring that up all the time too. It's like common sense isn't so common anymore. It just isn't. For instance, I'll, I'll say there's an establishment that we frequent often in Sugarland, right? One of our good friends runs this establishment and uh, she has to deal with angry emails from patrons, right? From people that come in and out of this establishment. She got an ugly email uh, the other day, day before yesterday about why this establishment hadn't gone full force on you have to be vaxxed to come into this establishment. And she was just like, look, and this, this, this person's pretty liberal. It's self-identified like pretty liberal said, re replied nicely like, we're taking the precautions that we're taking, which is like most places, like the staff has masks. Like, bitch, it ain't the Black Plague, ho. Yeah, the, the staff has masks. You can wear one if you want. You know, you know your freedom to choose. Wash your fucking hands. Right. Don't cough on people. Exactly. If you got a fever, don't come in this bitch, you damn idiot. Yeah, and, and then she so replied nicely like that. And then the, the customer came back again with like, that's unacceptable. It should be, you know, jabs. You can't come in here. You know, that kind of shit. And she's like. You should tell them, it's a, first of all, the jab is leaky. And it's not very durable. That's why you got to take three, four, five, eight, nine, ten boosters. And it's leaky. It doesn't even like this per the person that sent the email is talking about everybody should be jabbed to come in. Yeah, if it worked. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's not a cure. It's a treatment. De La Hoya in, in the hospital right now. De La Hoya is fully jabbed. Now, some people would argue there's, you know, some people in Canelo's team. You know, I got my sources. <laughs> I got my sources. Some people on Canelo's team would argue that De La Hoya faking the funk. He went in for some other shit. He in there, he ain't got not one oxygen tube in his nose. He just like, ah, oh, fuck, dude, I'm so tired. <laughs> Are you telling me he didn't want a fight coming oh, up? Oh, I'm so tired. Are you saying he's trying to get out of his boxing match? Pinche COVID, bro. Préstame la gurney. Hey, estoy no cabo. Cierra la puerta. Estoy no cabo. Préstame la gurney. Préstame la gurney. No mames, güey. It feels like a hangover, fool. Fuck, dude, I'm tired. Pinche COVID, bro. Me chingo el pinche COVID. What if he dies tomorrow? No, don't say that. <laughs> um, well, I mean, hey, good thing he never came out as a Republican or anything like that. Good thing nobody ever asked him how the fuck he voted That's because, true. you know, he's Mexican. He's going to wait. Mexican-Americans, you got to shut the fuck up and yeah. pretend you a lefty, you know, if you know what's good for your business. Um, I wonder if George Lopez saw a decline in any of his whatever he's doing. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like his fajitas he got in them stores and shit. Yeah. Uh, the beers and the tacos and all this other stuff. Yeah, doesn't he have a brick and mortar place? Like a, like a bakery, I think, opening he up? He probably too? licensed his name out yeah, or something that, that's, like that. Yeah, that's more what I meant. Yeah, because you ain't got time to be up in there. But, um, you know, are people fucking with it like that? Is it a tourist stop? It's like, oh my God, I want to get... I mean, you already got Trejo's Donuts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's already a ton of breweries. Like, your beer got to be super legit. But anyway, I wonder if anybody... If that shit left a bad taste in his mouth, where it's like, bro, it's 2021. Like, chill out with all the lefty shit. Yeah. Like, a lot of us, especially in California, man, a lot of Latinos, like, I met a ton of them. I was out there, did San Jose. I met a ton, young ones, too. Young ones that are hardcore. They're like, hey, man, what you think about Larry Elder? I'm like, oh, I think he might be a better option for y'all right now. They're like, well, there's a clip going around where he, he thinks the, the elections was legit, and he thinks Biden wasn't fair and square. Fuck elder. And I'm like, damn, hold on now. <laughs> Y'all going too hard. Like, you can't say fuck elder because he might be able to bring back some balance to y'all state in terms of like fiduciary, like economic, like deal with some of the crime and the homelessness and the taxes and manage the freaking fires better, the drought. I'm like, y'all can't just say fuck elder like that out the gate, bro. Yeah, that kind of that took me uh, by surprise when you said that they were younger. They were young and they were on it. They were just like, Hey man, great fucking show. Like, we got your back. I mean, the place was packed, San Jose Improv, like on a Wednesday. That's so dope. imagine if they gave me a weekend. Right at the camera. Anyway, go the camera's ahead. right there. Tell them. Imagine if I was given a weekend. Imagine if I was given an opportunity to do a Friday and a Saturday night in the Bay Area. All right, so check it out, man. Uh Rolling Stone put out an article and it's fake news. Yeah. What did they say? They said, and we kind of touched on it uh, funny enough earlier, that people were by droves being hospitalized and overdosing on horse dewormer. According to Rolling Stone. According to Rolling Stone. And according to what was the source was, when they wrote it, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, an actual doctor from this facility that we later came to find out hasn't been employed at this facility for some time and, there, and, and that there wasn't uh, anything that everything they had said was false. According to, I think, NIH or in, in, in somebody in the organization. Okay. So, so all the shit they were saying about ivermectin, basically, right? Yeah. It was yeah, false. Yeah. But, and all the people that were there, you know, that hospitals, that they didn't have any ambulances and there were no beds for people with gunshot wounds. And apparently even the photo that they used in the article was also not real. I mean, can we just call it propaganda and... Who who took it upon themselves to have to fact check it? And have they redacted that? Have they came back and said, hey, man, sorry, we we normally, like, this one slipped through the cracks. We thought the info was correct, but it turns out it wasn't. That's a good question. Let me look, actually look that up. By the end, the, dam the damage has been done. The propaganda is out there. And you <clears throat> you literally are shitting on a treatment that might be saving people. That's literally what y'all doing, Rolling Stone. I don't know if Big Pharma's paying y'all money. I mean, y'all are obviously leftists over there. I don't know if y'all consider yourselves Marxists or communists. Rolling Stone forced to issue an update after viral hospital ivermectin story turns out to be false. Oh, an update. They the North, an update. Uh, the North, uh, Northeastern Hospital System released a statement contradicting the story. That's, so that's who it was. I said NIH, but it was an NHS. It's the Northeastern Hospital System. Rolling Stone was forced to issue an update uh, to the viral story about Oklahoma hospitals being overwhelmed by patients who overdose on the drug ivermectin after a doctor uh, it cited was contradicted by the hospitals he had referenced. On Friday, the Liberal magazine published testimony by Dr. James McKeia, who told a local news station that the hospitals were being overrun by patients overdosing on ivermectin, which resulted in other patients wanting, uh, waiting for treatment. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The, the claim was so bad that gunshot victims were being uh, neglected. So that's the claim, right? So where the fuck's the... Yeah, so if you're on the left, while you look that up, if you're on the left, stuff like this, like if you're on the left and you want to stay on the left, this, this type of uh, um, debacle, it just chips away at the, uh, the credibility of all the institutions on the left. Like, I'm not saying Ronald Stone was like, used to be this like, man, you could just, you used to be able to live and die off of what the fuck Rolling Stone had to say. I mean, it was never really that. It was just more like, we're sitting down with John Mayer and, <laughs> and Chingo Bling, see when they gonna collab. Um, yeah, they did, they did Mayer wrong too, fucking Rolling Stone, when he said some shit about uh, Jessica Simpson back in the day. And they and you think they're the ones that egged it on? Like they did, they, they highlighted did. it. They did, yeah. Just trying to make them look bad. Of course. Because they were trying to do all this like anti-masculine. Yeah, um, he, you know, they, they painted him as, and he was like the, the, the shock playboy. Jock playboy. Okay. Yeah, exactly. 
But anyway. Yeah, he got a little silly personality and he could play the fucking guitar. But um but Rolling Stone, like when y'all do stuff like this, I'd argue that some people on the left are probably like, oh, fuck man, Chingo Bling and Rob gonna hop on that podcast and let <laughs> us have it. Because think about it, man. It's like how I, I know the right ain't perfect, because there's a lot of bullshit on right. But look at how often there's fake, false, hoax, propaganda coming out the left. Half the time, y'all don't even know. Half the time, y'all don't even realize it. Because y'all are living in this world where y'all looking through the world like rose-colored glasses and shit. Um, so know. the NHS had said uh, that the Dr. Makia works for the issue blah, 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 blah. so the NHS has revealed that he had he is in quote affiliated with the medical staff with a medical staffing group but has not worked at the location in question for two months nor has he treated any ivermectin overdoses so it took that medical group Fake themselves news. to come out and say hey Rolling Stone this is complete garbage yeah, like where y'all getting this info from exactly basically. somebody who was obviously not credible at all and who ran with it Joy Reid ran with it on her show on MSNBC uh, New York Daily News Newsweek and The Guardian and Insider ran Mockingbird. with it yeah. Mockingbird. So basically, they need somebody to take the fall and put the fake shit out, and then they all run with it and quote it. They just like boom, boom. Sources say, Rolling Stone article say, according to the NHS, according study show, new study show, new research show, uh, report, a new report, bombshell, bombshell, new news. Oh, another blow from you know the crazy right conspiracy. That's what they're gonna say. Yeah conspiracies from the right and joe rogan podcast listeners are so fucking stupid this is what they this is how they treat y'all y'all are so fucking dumb that y'all will go use this prize winning wonder drug that's great for so many things we happen to use it for animals first but it's like top three next to penicillin and aspirin as a fucking wonder drug it's improved people's lives all around the world they found it in japan y'all are so fucking stupid that y'all would take this horse to warm. So Rolling Stone put the update on... In, so I don't want to say in all fairness, because fuck them at this yeah, point. Yeah, fuck them. But they put the update in the article, uh, basically what I had just cited, and then says, this includes... So that, that hospital group had nev- hasn't even treated a single uh, overdose of ivermectin or any kind of dewormer claim. And then at the end of it, they say, we appreciate the opportunity to clarify this issue. And as always, we value our community support. Hey, fuck you. How about that? You fucking liars. I hope y'all lose so much credibility that... People just stop buying y'all stupid ass shit. That's like, so annoying, so aggravating. But again, the market will decide. You're right. If people finally like, you know what? There's one too many times Rolling Stone. Suck it. Well, the 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 harm, the real harm, is that they put it out there, and then all these other publications and and news people reference it, and they create this, you know, this facade in the ether mm-hmm. where now everybody that got on two masks in a car by themselves are like <laughs> ivermectin no thank you keep that away from me and it's like you fucking idiot this could have yeah. been a, a treatment in your arsenal you can tell when it's working I, i'm let me just speak for myself in my area because i as of the last two weeks there's probably been more people in like random spots with like masks and double masks than there were like a month before that so if we think about the last two or three weeks, like what has come out, it's shit like this, you know, it's, it's studies that, you know, surveys or whatever that the local news talk about or that the mainstream media might talk about to get people really scared and you start seeing more people. It's like a lot of people by themselves in their car pumping gas with the mask on, at the gas pump. All outside, they got their babies masked up. Yeah. Then they got their kids all on the playground outside. <laughs> yeah. Mommy. <laughs> no baby keep your mask on you fucking idiots anyway uh new fauci emails got released today fauci dropped a new set of emails <laughs> the new hot single who 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 um 900 of them and who was it again that's able to go in there and pull them up so the, it was, it's um, it's via a freedom of information act F-O, but i believe yeah, yeah F-O-I-A. foia yeah. foia and i think it was the intercept who has a lawsuit going against um the nih or fauci himself that they were able to, to get these emails. So that's literally breaking as of this morning. Like, there were like five publications that posted it this morning when I... I wonder how much of that shit is redacted. How much of what came out? Yeah, like, shit's all blacked out. You're like, man, what the fuck is this? That's a good question. I started reading It's 900 pages. <laughs> okay. God damn. Yeah. How many fucking emails did you send, Fauci? Well, the ones that are highlighted on Zero Hedge and on, um, I guess, The Intercept have some of the screenshots from... You know, the emails that are kind of like what you might want to know most. Was he talking dirty on there? Like, yes, ivermectin works. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we made it in the lab. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, that for the most part, there is like 
and they were they kind of tiptoe around it, obviously, right? But you can see, you can put the pieces together of what they were saying about combining this with that and new phrases that I didn't see on the last uh, drop of like this chimera based coronavirus, and it's just like okay, no, yeah, what is chimera? Chimera again? It's well, chimera like a- is a mythical creature, so I was trying to yeah, figure out how right? that applied. Yeah. But in in medical sense, it's like almost like a uh, let me just a term. Yeah, it's like a mysterious like I don't know germ. So it's like a little hybrid germ. Yeah, like a hybrid medical animal. Fauci is the father of the virus. He helped make it happen. Uh, they use taxpayer dollars. They use uh, Peter Daszak and Ralph Barrick. And there were two unpublished, previously unpublished, uh, uh, like, not, not bonds, um, grants that weren't previously published or known to the public with Peter Daszak funding the NIH. Yeah, Peter Daszak of the... Uh, World Eco, Economic Eco, Forum or something mm-hmm. like that. I, I, no, 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 no. Ecolab. No. Yeah, World Ecolab. Some shit. You got Peter Daszak, punk ass. Uh, Ralph Barrick, I think University of North Carolina. They funneled the money. I forget the the uh, the bat lady, the Chinese lady. I forget she her name. Or something. Man, I need to. I'll be getting these names confused. I know. But she went. What she would do is she would go to these far off regions and and try to find these bat viruses in these caves. She go in there and collect bat poop, bring it back to the Wuhan. But those those bats are not even from that region in Wuhan where they told y'all it came out of soup. Anyway, these motherfuckers lie. They use your taxpayer dollars and all this shit is facade. They, you know what I mean? The jab is leaky. That shit ain't working. The jab don't keep you from catching it or spreading it. It does have side effects. Meanwhile, they shitting on all the treatments that might be able to work. Now you got fast forward. Now you got Joe Rogan beat that shit over the weekend because he's fucking Joe Rogan. And he took some ivermectin and a bunch of other shit. And now you got De La Hoya, who may or may not have. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck De La Hoya doing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there you go. Fully jabbed De La Hoya is in the hospital. Dude, Peter Daszak, this picture from 2014 looks like Doc Antle, the guy from uh, Tiger King that's mm-hmm. from Florida. It looks exactly like Might him. Might be the same guy. <laughs> so we will keep an eye on the Fauci emails. Not sure. I mean, the motherfucking Fauci still got a job. And his daughter works at Twitter. So... Maybe that's why his shit ain't trending in terms of like, are y'all not seeing these fucking emails? Anyway, back to my blood pressure. Uh, Jobs <laughs> report for August came out. Uh, the Biden administration, their el estomago, everything they touch turns to shit. They ruin everything. Our economy was strong not that long ago. Our border was secure not that long ago. Gas was cheaper not that long ago. We had peace not that long ago. Um, now, here come the jobs report. They fell short by a factor of three they were only able to create like 225,000 new jobs they were projected to create like 723,000 or some shit by a factor of three they fell short so build back better means huevos uh elections have consequences motherfucking latinos about to start voting red like a motherfucker they pure maga um it's our sons and daughters and once they get shipped off put in harm's way they just created this whole terrorist state in Afghanistan. You know what I mean? Taliban working with China. The Taliban got all the leverage. Thanks a lot, Joe Biden. We leaving Americans behind. We bringing God knows who to our fucking soil. It's a fucking debacle. Anyway, the jobs report is out. Uh, y'all know the economy. That's just something that affects everybody. I don't care if you black, blue, yellow, brown, polka dot or pinstripe. It affects everybody. Keep an eye on inflation. According to this, the jobs report, stagflation is here. We had low job growth plus record high inflation. If you're not paying attention now as to why my blood pressure is so high, stagflation is here. But some of y'all got y'all's head so far up y'all's booty. Y'all don't even know what the hell going on. Y'all don't know. Y'all, y'all dealing with uh, y'all at the kids table still worrying about he said drink bleach. You fucking idiot. He never said that. So we shall see what happens, man. Hopefully we can get our elections under control. If not, it is the end of the republic. You know, the media is the enemy of the people. And I don't know where this country's headed, man. Because 2022, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Put your predictions in. Put your predictions in. Y'all keep voting in these fucking spies like Swalwell. Y'all still fighting for Newsom. Talking about, give Newsom a chance, perro. Give Newsom a chance, perrito. Okay. (laughs) Enjoy. Enjoy that. People can't even afford to live in L.A. It's getting so fucked up. Enjoy. Elections have consequences. Enjoy. 
<laughs> with uh with you know we're in september now right so with uh thanksgiving 2021 back around the corner we're gonna hit our one year anniversary of the show mm-hmm. and i feel like we're gonna have to make I- i'm gonna have to take quite a bit of time to go through and parse out clips from every month from november 20 uh 2020 to november 2021 and make some kind of compilation i also hope that by 2021 thanksgiving we have a huge surge of real Red Pill Tamale fans that join the Patreon so we can do something special for the one year anniversary and hopefully all come together with like a theory or a thesis of what's going to happen 2022 midterms and then going forward into 2024 because I'm telling you the pendulum has started to swing the other direction. I know and that's why we got to fix the elections because no matter how upset people get does your vote count? I used to be the main one telling people, hey, man, don't get discouraged, man. Of course your vote counts. We all got to vote, man. Yes, your vote counts. And now I'm looking like 81 million votes, my G, in these swing counties and swing states like that? 81 million? More than Obama. Biden, you telling me your sleepy ass got more votes than Obama. The man that actually had energy and could speak. And he was like a populist on the left. And he, ne- Obama never once said, I'm going to be y'all's first black president. I'm going to be a president for black America. I'm going to be the black. I'm the first black. He never said that. That's one thing I did like about his bitch ass. Um, so here's the thing, though. When you go back and comp- compile these old clips, where are they going to be seen? Let's we'll just make it into like a YouTube compilation. Okay. I can almost just take all the clips that we've posted over the last year and just put those all, like, put like good ones together in like a five or ten Actually, minute. a nice compilation would be dope. Just like... Maybe just little phrases like, mm. if y'all not paying attention to the economy now, and put the date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, inflation is coming. Put the date. Y'all keep thinking China ain't no threat. Yeah. Put, the, put the date. I'm telling y'all, China is the reason I voted how I voted. Put the date. I swear, I've just done so much talking that I can't even remember a pinpoint. Like, was it on my Periscope, the first thing that went viral? I don't know if it was on my Periscope or maybe it was on... Uh, What's his name? American Cholo Gill. I don't know if it was on his show. I don't know who show. Maybe on the Lexit movement when I was a guest on there. I can't remember where, when, how. I was saying, y'all better watch China. Y'all better watch China. I mean, you were saying that from the beginning. You were saying that before you heard a lot of people really vocally talking about it. Because everybody was so concerned with the election itself, which with good reason. They weren't really talking about the ex- like the external factors of what else, you know. Who in, was yeah. pulling the strings yeah, on yeah. the election. Yeah, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, to say what you're allowed to say, because, you know, you're not allowed to say certain things. But here we are. Uh, Tim Kennedy opens up a private school. It is called Acton. Yeah, it's an Acton. So Acton is like the organization, and his is called Apogee uh, Cedar Park. So it's in Austin in, in the Cedar Park area. Is it K through 12? What is it? It is. It's an accredited K through 12 private academy. I sent you and my soul the, the, the link, so hopefully I can watch the video later. I'm pretty sure they make sure all their kids can read and stuff by the time they graduate. Dude, it I'm is pretty sure. so impressive, okay? I didn't even know. I mean, I'd been following him, and I didn't look into the actual acting like, curriculum or the organization until this morning. And his um, Apogee uh, Academy like website has a little mini doc on the homepage. It's like 15 minutes. It is fascinating. These kids range from obviously K through 12, but the ones that they highlighted in there were probably like 6 to 13, 6 to 11, I think, something like that. You just listen to these kids, okay? You listen to these kids and then you listen to the dummies that are on TikTok and you're like, holy shit, man, what a world of a difference, real proper guidance does. Well, that might be our future. I mean... And there's four of them in the Houston area. Oh, that's amazing. So yeah, that's probably going to be the future leaders of our country because... How on earth are we supposed to compete yeah. against other countries? How are we supposed to compete? Like in China, I was watching this uh, documentary. It was on YouTube. It was called like uh, 996, which basically means you got to work nine hours, a, like from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, right? That's how hard they're working these people. But there's so much social pressure on them because they don't want to fall from that like white collar cast system mm-hmm. that class down to the blue collar like bitch i was making lebron sneakers all day mm. you know what i mean i was making these sh- these uh fucking jerry garcia bobbleheads all day <laughs> um so 
they were like documenting it. And this one lady is like, now I'm on call 24 seven. She's like, I had to go to Shanghai for a meeting. She's like, now I got to put out all these fires, like on my phone, on the train ride back. She's like, by the time I get home, I just want to shower, get in bed, look at social media. She's like, I used to play guitar after work. She's like, I don't have time for any of that. But there's all this social pressure to where you ain't got no choice because China's trying to be the leader. They are trying to be the superpower. Obviously India is trying to do the same thing. Like everybody's competing. Except for us. Over here, we've gone so fucking woke that you dare not question the reading ability as to like, why these, hold on, why these motherfuckers ain't passing? Uh, uh, because people of color, uh, these are, uh, uh, no, Latinos, you know, don't, you know, black people, uh, you know, the... You know, the statistics for uh, black high school students and this and that. And look at look at the reading level of these Latinos. It's like, well, it's because... Stop making excuses for every goddamn body. It's 2020 fucking one. It's 2021. Parents, like, you got, you're got you going to have to pick up the slack. If your kids are in public school, congratulations. You're now going to have more work to do to make sure that they're up to par. To where they have some skills and some trades and some fucking manners. God forbid they're stupid and disrespectful. <laughs> God forbid they dumb and disrespectful. They too busy trying to teach them critical race theory. They're too busy trying to teach them like how to be, what is it? Revolutionaries. Uh, revolutionaries. They too busy teaching about Karl Marx and Shea and fucking Castro. There's children's books where they try to like reframe Shea, uh, Shea Guevara and motherfucking Fidel Castro. Like uh, the Cubans suddenly started to see better health care and better education. Shut the fuck up. Stop lying. Anyway. Uh, shout out to Tim Kennedy. Uh, it'd be awesome to meet him one day, and who knows, man? I need to find out where I'm gonna send Valentina. Uh, Mickey, she's already in the private school. Penny, she might go to Second Baptist. She might be homeschooled. We don't know. Look up the uh, the Katie Acton Academy. Acton, got it. We'll look that up for sure. Uh, crime in Chicago. Um, if Afghanistan doesn't watch out, Afghanistan might get to Chicago crime rate. <laughs> Are you here in Afghanistan? Afghanistan, get your shit together. Make sure y'all got good mayors and all that because y'all's murder rate going to start looking like Chicago murder rate. I'm assuming most of this is on the south side. Yeah. So why don't anybody ever bring that up, that it's mostly black on black crime? Is it that you're just not allowed to, to culturally address the situation? Like, y'all busy censoring everybody else. I don't see y'all censoring little dirt in them, the trap and the drill, all the drill culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe we need to free Larry Hoover out of prison. Maybe there will be some fucking control on the street. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chicago got so many gangs. It's like split off of a split off of a gang of, like, it's gangster disciples versus these people versus the vice lords versus them versus Latin kings. And Chicago, what, what's up with Mayor, Mayor Lightfoot? Hmm. What is she doing? She just had Lollapalooza. What the fuck? Dude, uh, Tim Dillon. Mm -hmm. went on this deep rabbit hole of Mayor Lightfoot. Okay. Any chance you saw any of these clips? I think he posted maybe one of them. It might have been from a Patreon episode, but he or uh, his producer maybe found, or somebody had sent them an old Yelp review that Mayor... She yelped, yeah. Did you see that? Who did she yelp? It was uh, like a driver? A, it, yeah, it was like, a, it was like a party bus company, and he yelped the driver and the company, and it... it like was, lied and made yeah, shit up to ruin... Yeah, the whole thing was a lie. To ruin them. Yep. Like that he got out and he went inside and peed on her seat and was rude and this, that, and the other. And then came, come to find out that there's cameras and there's GPS in there to, to notify if the driver ever leaves the car. He had never even left the car. This is the kind of person that's your mayor of, the, of what, the second largest, third largest city or whatever it is? Yeah, they're, they're third. They're like tied with us. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's right. They like to consider us the fourth. Yes. Just because we know we red state. So I love living in the red state. I never... I never, I never even knew the difference, blue state, red state. I never even appreciated a red state. I had no idea. Did you know how great it was, like, in comparison? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. My dad did not let me go a week without knowing that. That, hey, Miko, you live in a red state. How would he say it? If I, if I ever said anything that sounded a little bit liberal that, that wasn't to his liking, he would look, even when I wanted to move away for school, even though I, if I maybe once joked about leaving Texas for go to school, he's like, you don't fucking know what state you live in. You live in the Lone Star State, the greatest fucking. You know he would go on this rant. Like, I, honestly, it could have just been a simple thing I may have said. That that's how triggered he would get. And you loved it. 
You loved every bit of his rants. I do now. <laughs> at the time, I could appreciate him. Father, like, you were right. Yeah, at, at the time, I could be. I would. I would literally go to my room and be like, "Man, why does he get so worked up when I say anything about like not being?" Because we and he's like, and we shall succeed. Yeah, he get pretty worked up. And about come it. and take it. Yeah, it's legit, dude. So. That's how I was uh, the Sunday show in Denver, Colorado. I was teaching teaching them about the Battle of Gonzalez. Oh yeah, 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 that's right. You were riffing on that, weren't you? Yeah, I'm going off. I I can't wait to go back and listen to that recording, so that I can be tip top magoo and ready for El Paso. That show's gonna be lit when you go back to San Antonio. Oh yeah, I'm, why why you think why I'm, you think San Antonio? I, mean, just, I mean, well, I was doing some uh, some market research, you know, in, in the Chingle Bling audience. Obviously, like I think San Antonio is the third largest city with like uh, social reach. Well, hey, they keep taking them Afghani unvetted refugees to san antonio and pretty soon people are gonna start being like man let me hear what chingo talking about maybe he ain't crazy we're uh, we're also planning to go to san antonio for those shows because uh, her sister lives up there and her sister and brother-in-law have never seen you live and they want to see you so maybe we can actually i don't want to put more on your plate but if we can figure out some content to do podcast wise there like with black rifle people or somebody we should figure out something to do yeah maybe start reaching out uh now yeah to them okay so we, I think we already covered this, the FOIA release. The Intercept has obtained more than 900 pages of yes. documents detailing the work of the Echo Health Alliance, uh, Peter Daszak, a U.S.-based health organization that used federal money through Ralph Barrick, University of North Carolina, to fund bat, coronavi bat coronavirus research, a.k.a. the bat lady, the doctor, the, the Chinese scientist, at the Chinese laboratory, the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Why is the left so hell-bent at defending all of this information? We're Americans. We're under attack. This should be top fucking front page news but we have been sold out by these punk ass marxist globalists and punk ass athletes and stupid ass hollywood got y'all so fucking brainwashed that y'all not paying attention to this shit i feel like alex jones right now yeah, a little bit that's what I. we feel need like. to get dude maybe that's what we need we need anchor desks we need an anchor desk so you sit behind it like alex jones and it's like you know well, i got the paperwork right exactly here. i got the documents yeah i guess man you know what god bless um Alex Jones's blood pressure because yeah. I don't know how the fuck he does it. He's been doing this shit for probably decades. And, uh, you know, I don't want to catch no aneurysm <laughs> over this shit. And I just let me hit the lotto one time. I swear to God, I delete Facebook, all that bullshit. Because I don't even like, I don't even like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> I don't even like one of being on this fucking platinum. He sells all our data. You know what I mean? They trying to get all your biometrics so they can clone your bitch ass in the future download you on the silicon chips because they're godless atheists on the left i feel like this episode should be a premium one you've been on such a such a hot one today <laughs> oh the, i said too much right? no I'm, job, I'm kidding i'm and that's good people are gonna love this shit and that's how it is man 2021 like you think you have freedom of speech you know i got some jokes in my uh comedy set where i'm where i kind of talk about freedom of speech i even said in, in, De in denver i was like well i mean shit if you don't believe me the taliban's able to tweet trump can't <laughs> and then they're like laughing while also thinking like damn he's right nah i don't know if you're on the left you already so close-minded like i'm on the open-minded group yeah i'm on the i'm on the side where we are still keep a healthy distrust yes. of the government uh there's a gentleman from the music business his name is jimmy umile have you heard of him um i know jimmy he, no, no, no. Jimmy Humilde. He's like the Mexican Jimmy Iveen, pretty much. Uh, he's got a record label called Rancho Humilde. He is the CEO. And he signed a bunch of those... Um, what do they call that style? It's like the cub music. Like um, the No Quema Cub. Like Uno Cub? Uh, no, 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 no. It's like the Corridos. Nathaniel Cano. What do they call that? Oh, like Corridos Tumbados. Okay. Yeah, shit like that. Anyway, sorry, y'all. So he posted... He, he's always pushing the jab and shit like that. Pobrecito bless his heart. He don't know no better. So he posted some government cheese. And he's like, those of you that know about this, I salute you. Mi, je, mi jefita rayaba el queso arriba de una tostada con frijoles y jalapeños. Como rendía mi jefita la comida para que tuviéramos para comer todo el mes. Imagine if they gave these out to some of these kids nowadays. They would say, I'm not going to eat that. The government trying to kill you with that. It's a trap. End quote. Laugh, 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 like funny emojis. Mm. Like these stupid, this is his point of view. 
these kids these days are so dumb they distrust the government and they'll probably say something like i'm not going to eat that stuff from the government it's probably bad for me because the government doesn't have my fucking health in their best interest he's trying to draw a parallel i believe to mm. like saying Y'all won't take the jab because y'all don't trust the government. I bet if y'all gave you this cheese, this free government cheese, y'all might still say don't take it because it's the government. We don't trust them. Of course, I had to chime in. I said socialism in moderation. Thumbs up. But also keep a healthy amount of distrust in the government. Brown fist. (laughs) In other words, I'm more of the school of... Since when do we become so trusting of the government? That's what I'm Ooh, saying. Ooh, y'all lame. Y'all are so brainwashed. Y'all believe the news. This is what y'all do on y'all side. This is George Lopez's side. Y'all love believing the news. Y'all love trusting the government. Y'all can't wait to give y'all's guns up. Y'all be like, govern me harder, daddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if Fauci, ha- y'all love Fauci. That's y'all. Y'all over there, y'all love Fauci. Fauci tell y'all to wear 10 fucking masks and get 18 boosters. Y'all can't wait to line up. On our side, we keep an open mind. We don't want to censor you. We don't want to cancel you. We got an open mind. We trying to listen to different sources. We trying to really see, okay, why, why they keep calling ivermectin horse dewormer? What is, what's up with that? What is it for? You know what I mean? Y'all are on the side of believing Rolling Stone, everything the fuck they say. Rolling Stone said people with gunshot wounds in Oklahoma couldn't get service in the, in, in the hospital because too many of these stupid Trumpers were overdosing on ivermectin. Now we ain't got enough ICU beds. Y'all the ones that believe the shit came from bat soup. Us over here, we already up on game. We already read Fauci emails. We already know about Peter Daszak, Ralph Barrick, Fauci, and how United States taxpayer dollars helped fund the motherfucking Wuhan Institute of Virology. We've been knowing this shit didn't come from soup. Y'all too busy trying to call people crazy and censor everybody. Y'all on the side of big tech. Y'all goofy. Y'all on the side of Newsom. Y'all think Newsom doing a good job. Y'all think Biden is doing a good job. Get your head out of your ass. The border was just secured. That's where all the fentanyl and the child trafficking come from. Y'all have no idea that Biden administration lost 5,000 out of the 15,000 unaccompanied kids. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that. Remember when they were saying Trump separating people from his parents? No, Trump separating people from these grown ass men talking about I'm the daddy. Right. Big fucking difference. He was trying to protect these kids. But the media, which y'all love, y'all love the media. Y'all believe anything the media say. The media was trying to paint this man as an evil fucking Hitler that y'all believed all of it. Us on, on this side, we were just like, wait a minute. We looking into shit. So I, it would behoove you as 2022 rolls around as 21 comes to an end maybe start to keep a healthy skepticism a healthy amount of distrust you know what i'm saying like y'all love drawing drawing these false parallels as to like well i mean are you anti-vax no bitch i got all kind of vaccinations (laughs) okay well are you i mean vaccines are already mandated they about to come for your kids bro listen to what i'm telling you today is this drops wednesday september 8th 2021 they are on a fast track to get the fda approval for like i think 12 and up i can't even remember i don't know if it's age six and up but they want the youngsters they want to force their kids to get the jab they no longer worried about antibodies they don't want to test you to see if you got antibodies which is stronger than the jab because the jab is leaky um they're they don't even want to talk about herd immunity anymore what happened to that we're not talking about herd immunity no more Anyway, did you all uh, read that article I happened to have sent a couple days ago uh, that uh, CNN posted the survey where 80 plus percent of people 16 and over have natural immunity or have immunity rather? I mean, that sounds like herd immunity to me. Exactly. It sounds like we should be partying in the streets is what it sounds like. And and this shit went from a pandemic to endemic, meaning you just got to live with it. Kind of like a flu. Yeah. I know people might misconstrue that and be like, you're fucking downplaying it, Chingo. Three million people died and your president downplayed it. And that's why so many people died. My president is the one that shut down the fucking flights from Wuhan. Meanwhile, this, will, this is what China was doing, y'all. I want to make this a clip. George Lopez ain't going to tell you this. What China was doing when the shit was popping off, when they knew about it, when it leaked out of the Wuhan Institute of Virology around September, they said, you know what? Chinese New Year coming up. Should we shut down flights? No. Let everybody fly out. Let everybody fly to America and go see their family. You had... um. Uh, a fashion week in, in uh, Milan, Italy. What they do? Did they shut stuff down? No, they knew. 
Why do you think Italy got lit up with the virus? They was letting people fly out. So you had Chinese New Year. You had uh, Fashion Week in Milan. Um, they isolated Wuhan from the rest of the of the of the mainland China, their country. Meanwhile, they're letting them fly out all over the world. They bind up all the PPP. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization tweeted saying, "There's no human to human transfer. Don't worry, we good. Y'all ain't got shit to worry about." Our stupid ass CDC fell for the shit. All the politicians, oh, Wuhan, World Health Organization, they said. All the crazies are like, we need to keep an eye on that shit. We need to shut down flights. They call Trump xenophobic. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. The economy wasn't doing that bad not that long ago. Biden is fucking, fucking up America quicker than you could say, come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Survey, more than 80% of Americans 16 or older have immunity. More than 80% of Americans 16 or older have immunity uh, against the coronavirus, mostly through vaccinations, a survey of blood donations indicates. So this is a survey led by the CDC and posted by CNN. If you want to read it, it's pretty interesting. Uh, it's t but it, the way it's titled, you know, the way they bury that type of a headline, which should be a headline, is U.S. states that had some of the worst COVID-19 rates in the past week also reported the highest rates of new vaccinations. That's the headline, but what you should really probably highlight is that 80% of people 16 or older having immunity. But, it, but it's not. They're about to force your kids to get it, whether you like it or not. Uh, you don't got the jab, can't have a job. Um, can't function in society. It's getting ridiculous. Uh, what's his name? Um, man, what's that, what's that dude's name? Uh, Lynn Wood, is that his name? Lynn Wood? The lawyer? Uh, was, the, yeah, yeah, he's like ex... Um, well, he just got kicked off Chase Bank. Oh, really? Yeah, they said uh, basically it's like a reputational hazard. Like, we can't be aligned with you. We can't have you over here. Shut the fuck up, Chase. If I pull my money out, y'all shit. <laughs> um, this is an interesting stat you, you put, put on the notes. Uh, private schools gained over 40,000 jobs. Meanwhile, public schools lost over 30,000 jobs. Sounds like a transfer. Yep. And that so, was in that same report that was uh, talking about the jobs report. Yeah. So, yeah, as y'all see where America's headed, I expect an apology from a lot of y'all, <laughs> a lot of y'all uh, music producers I work with, uh, DJ friends, uh, fucking other comedians, all the assholes that didn't give me the benefit of the doubt. You know what I'm saying? Fuck y'all. And I expect a goddamn apology. When shit hits the fan, y'all better change y'all's motherfucking tune. <laughs> anyway. A four-year-old shot in the head twice while getting a haircut in Chicago drive-by. Yeah, you man. imagine you the barber, you turn around, all right, little homie, let me let me dust your neck off, and then pop, pop. I was at a haircut place getting my six-year-old's haircut when I read that. Like, no shit. That's why, like, the life's not real. We're in a simulation kind of shit when I read it, and I was like, oh, my God. Well, what it is, bro, is it's probably black on black crime. Uh -huh. It's probably on the south side of Chicago, and there ain't no more real homies left. You're not allowed to fucking speak up. Who who we got to wait on? Who's got to speak up? Boosie? Who? Yeah, man, that was a terrible article to read. Jay Prince? Who? Who's going to have to speak up? Kanye, Drake, Jay-Z, somebody. Like, look, when I was coming up, bro, in the hip-hop game, you would you would have conscious rappers. You would even have these songs like, um, what was it called? Uh, self-destruction. It ain't but self-destruction. Have you heard of it? Mm -mm. Okay, it's super old. But you had songs like Self Destruction, where basically you'd have rappers from different coasts and shit coming together. That's what Chicago needs. Mm. We need uh, Lil Durk and all these people, East Coast, West Coast, Rick Ross, Miami, everybody. We need like a fucking stop the violence type of fucking song. It ain't worth it. Y'all killing babies in these drive bys. What rhymes with drive by? I don't know. Y'all figure it out. I'm a podcaster now. <laughs> um, watch this Self Destruction. And there's some other, there's some other songs too that I can't think of, but off the top of my head. Hold on a second. And who is this? It was different groups came together. Oh. Okay, that's Karis One, Heavy D, Kumo D. The imagery's powerful. Mm -hmm. You got like police on there. They showing images. We go red alert. DJ red alert. 
Authentic self-destruction It really ain't the rap audience that's bugging It's one of two suckers Ignorant brothers Trying to rob and steal from one another You get caught in the mid So to crush that stereotype Here's what we did We got ourselves together So that you could unite and fight for what's right Not negative cause The way we live is positive We don't kill our relatives Pop, 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 one and shot who's the blame Headlines, front page, and raps the name MC Delight here to state the bottom line Let me find. Wow. It's about unity. Right. We don't have leaders in hip hop no more, man. I think they're going to have to free Larry Hoover and get some order back in the streets. It's ridiculous. How the fuck? You over here trying to do the crate challenge Mm -hmm. and now you getting shot at. So look, we need songs like this. Um, it, it's just a damn shame that in today's today's entertainment business, in the music business, shit like this is not getting made. It's not getting pushed. Like, ain't nobody, there ain't no fucking executive at Warner Brothers or Universal or Sony. None of y'all had his bright idea. Say, hey man, we really care. Right? All y'all fucking lefties. I thought the lefties were the ones with the uh, empathy. Mm. Where the lefties at? Why ain't nobody saying, hey, man, we need Jay to kiss on the track. We need, man, so call somebody from the Midwest. We need this person, uh, uh, an up-and-comer from L.A. Somebody used to be down with Nipsey Hussle's crew. And everybody do a fucking song on a hard-ass beat. Call Timberland and Swiss Beats since they got so much money and so many beats. Call Missy Elliott. Maybe she could write the hook. Something. Make that go viral. Get Travis Scott. Can you get Future for a minute? Put the fucking guns down. Let's do a goddamn song. All right, I'm going to try to think of the other song. You got Self-Destruction. This wasn't even the only one, bro. Um, and that was what, 80s? This might have been the early, early 90s. But the comments are like, one of the best, most positive hip-hop songs that was ever made. There's no money in positivity. They'll call you lame. They'll call you a square. Nowadays, what are they promoting? Wakisha. Talking about some fucking pharmaceutical, big pharma opiate. They promoting opiates. They talking about popping pills and shit. Y'all pushing pharmaceuticals. Y'all pushing a fucking epidemic. That epidemic already hit Houston. How many people we done died? I mean, how many people done died off of fucking uh, lean and syrup and codeine and all that? Uh, where are the? Uh, where's the other one? I know Queen Latifah had a song called Unity. Self destruction. This was about. Um, it had Dougie Fresh, Heavy D, Kumo D, MC Light, Stetsasonic, Boogie Down Productions. They all came together. It was a stop the violence movement. It was popular. Damn, what is the name of the other one? I can't think of it right now. We'll remember it for the next yeah, episode. But but if that was cool. If, if these executives, right, at these record labels, if they really cared about black people, y'all making all this money off of black culture. Yeah. I've been in these executive rooms. Sometimes it ain't no black people in there. <laughs> y'all care so much about black culture. Y'all make so much money off black culture that nobody had the fucking bright idea is it beyond you you can't y'all can't make a song y'all 42 doug and all these people y'all there's is nobody thought of it maybe somebody wanted to make it and they didn't want it or it didn't come out yet or they still mixing it down somebody explain this shit to me how can you have so many babies getting shot every fucking weekend in chicago and you just hearing more and more songs coming out dissing each other uh beef i'm gonna shoot you this and that. And you would think P. Diddy, somebody. Hmm. And, and then he changed his name to Love or some shit. Wouldn't P. Diddy? Somebody say, hey, man, we're going to donate all the proceeds. Nah. The way they see it, I'm sure it's, they've made it out. So what are they going to do? Hey, fuck it. I'm just a sellout. Y'all ain't got to take it from me. Right? I'm just full of bad ideas. But you would think, one of the, Jimmy Iovine, how much money you made off Apple? Anyway. Or the people that signed me, Todd Moskowitz and all these people. I mean, they're good people. I would think they might be able to match the gas and put something like that out. The market decides, man. I guess ain't no money in that shit. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, Chingo. Ain't no money in that shit. Let's just, it's more profit and murder. There's a lot more profit to be made. I mean, think about it, lefties. Y'all the same ones that keep promoting Planned Parenthood. Racist ass Planned Parenthood started by Margaret Sanger look into her beliefs on black people and race and and different ethnicities and population control why is it that 
You got all these black celebrities and all the lefties promoting this. Oh, my God. Dude, they're up in arms over this heartbeat law. What What you mean just because the baby got a heartbeat, we can't <clears throat> kill it? Dude, it was number one on today's topic, but I, I deleted it because we talked about it last week, and it's just like it's been talked about to death. But you're okay. right. No, no, no. I, yeah, it's a quick little chime in, which is basically like, like that lady, Les Dog, mm-hmm. um, uh, from SNL. Where, is this this gonna be the last topic, and yeah. then we shift over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To uh, ain't okay. no rush. Okay, I'm just seeing. Okay, um, that lady, Les Dog. I forget her real name. Les Jones. I forget her name. Funny lady from SNL. She be posting up at MSNBC, and I be having to go leave comments. Oh, like, Leslie Jones. Yeah. So I like she posted something about, oh my god, why the fuck these crazy Texans want to save babies, and you just got to reframe it for them. And I'm like. How many black lives, how many, how many minorities, how many minority babies will be saved from racist ass Planned Parenthood? Mm -hmm. You got to reframe it for them. The black population is supposed to be double what it is. Oh, I didn't know that, Chingo. They don't tell you that. Les Jones ain't finna tell you that. Yeah. Um, What Margaret Sanger, why are the Planned Parenthoods always in the hood? How many babies could we save? You know what I mean? Why are they always targeting us? Oh, we ain't think of it like that. I had to reframe it for you. Why is Planned Parenthood targeting minorities? Why do they want to kill minority babies so much? Uh, 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 it's because uh, crazy Taliban, Texas, uh, Trump, Trump supporters, they, uh, they're racist and they don't believe in a woman's choice. Okay, well, who's going to speak up for the babies? Uh, uh, well, you know, women uh, got... We should reach out to Planned Parenthood for a sponsorship. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them baby killers, bro. Uh, why are they always in the hood? You know, something to think about. Questions I don't people know. don't want to ask. How about this? Are there any mainstream black celebrities or Latino celebrities who are pro-life? Who say, hey, man, um, like Kanye tried. Right. Kanye tried. What'd they say? He's off his meds. He's crazy as fuck. Yeah, he's off his... Our uh, reports show... Like in that Uncle Tom, show. in that Uncle Tom documentary, they showed how everybody drug him in the mud. They're just like, he's <laughs> sources in uh, Kanye's circle. Shut up, man. He a genius billionaire. Who cares? He's a little bipolar. Listen to what the fuck he got to say. Let's see real quick. The minute he went and shook Trump's hand, he's obviously off his meds. How dare? How dare a black man walk off the Democrat plantation? When you Google pro-life black celebrities. Zero. You, what you get instead is 28 celebrities who have shared their <clears throat> abortion stories to help women feel less alone. Who the fuck? We got, let's go down the list, everybody. Ashley Judd, not black, but okay. Uh, April Love, don't know who that is. Not a celebrity. Stevie Nicks. Okay. All right. Wow. Damn, she's old school. She probably did hers with a hanger. 100%. I think she even made a song about it. What a rusty hanger. I don't know, just going slow. But that, that's the first thing. Uh, Laura Prepon, the orange is a new black star. Mm. Okay. Uh, Alyssa Milano, of course. Of course. Of course. She ain't had shit to say about Biden's Me Too moment. Hannah Gatsby. Did she, did she say anything about Cuomo's Me Too? I don't think so. Mm. Punk ass. But I did see her. Oh. That shit don't, uh, all the Me Too people be quiet when it's a Democrat. Did you hear old dude from uh, that show? I didn't know who he was. Jane the Virgin talk about the government should make all men get vas- vasectomies. Send me that link. Oh, man. dude. Dude, fuck it. We're, we're what already, is he, the lead singer? I mean, the lead actor? I get he, We're already going long on this, so fuck okay, it. Let's yeah, keep we'll, it going. we'll end it with this. We'll end it with this because we have I saw to manage her, our time. I saw her comment on his like, oh my God, thank you for saying this, Alyssa Milano. So... Yeah, Gina Rodriguez is the star of that show. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Gina is Jane the Virgin. Okay, I've never seen it. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd heard the name that of it. That was like her big break. Okay. That's what blew her up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Never watched it. I just know the name. Well, well there you have it. Um, y'all keep listening to celebrities if y'all want. Meanwhile, y'all chastising people like Kanye. Uh, meanwhile, there ain't no positive art getting made. None of these... They're, they're, we're having a hard time finding a pro-life black celebrity or Latino celebrity. Yeah. I'm going to try to pull this up real quick for you before we go. You're not allowed to be pro-life. You'll lose your job in Hollywood. Apparently, you got to be in that pro-life closet. Hey, where are you going to be at, Chingo? You're, going, you're on tour, aren't you? I have El Paso coming up. Well, you need me to 
throw some dates in there? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. I'm pulling it up right now. I'm just got to find it. I had to sift through a couple of accounts. Self-destruction. Okay, is there another fucking positive rap song that I don't... I'm not finding. It's a Stop the Violence. Let, let me put Stop the Violence rap song. You're also going to get zero results the way I got zero results. Um... Okay, back to self-destruction. Oh, we're all in the same gang. Here's another one. Who was that? Who was that last voice? This guy, he sounds like MC Ren or something. Yeah. These are like West Coast dudes. You don't hear that shit no more, man. Not at all. Look at that. Humpty Hump was even on it. what a woman can and can't do with her body. But it's like not at all about women, right? A heartbeat. It's not about women, it's about life. Okay, so does that mean that the government can now decide what us men can and can't do with our bodies? It's just a false parallel. I have an idea. What if every unmarried man had to get a mandatory reversible vasectomy? I mean, I got one. a lot easier than having my wife on birth control. And I can tell you that it is 100% effective at preventing births. And the best part is that I get to have all of the unprotected sex I want to have with my wife, with her consent, of course, without any of the consequences. You in, fellas? Or is it your body, your choice? I just heard. It's, it, it's just a bad yeah, analogy. I, I know. Where do we even start? Ripping it's, that stupid argument apart. Look, man. First of all, the boy got a man bun. Da. So, how about what's his what's his name? I don't even know his name. Jason Baldarani. Okay, we're just gonna pray for him because he's probably gonna be forever lefty. Uh, he probably eats a lot of soy. Uh, he's not alpha. Um, he, he you know he could be alpha if if he thought he changed his way of thinking. But his analogies suck. That's a terrible analogy. What the fuck does saying "Hey man, we got a heartbeat law" versus Force vasectomies for dudes. Yeah, it, it's it, almost. If anything, we're doing forced hysterectomies, or if we were tying women's tubes. Exactly. Maybe that's a better fucking parallel. Yeah, because again, like, where do you start, right? With women, you have different methods of not getting pregnant, right? It, and it's also the argument that I hear is that like people use. But that's not even what this is about. I know, but this is the way they're framing it. Oh so if God. they're talking about this to their audiences this way, then you have to kind of try to meet them with, with what they're talking about. You could at least go to that people are us- people using it for contraception. That's kind of fucked up in that sense. That's one of the things that like you could use condoms, birth control, you know, IUDs, whatever, you know. And then also some the way somebody framed it was like women also just have the choice to not get pregnant by one of a multitude of ways, whereas. Saying something like the government should make all men get vasectomies, that's not the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. At all, at all. Yeah. Well, fuck it. He's a lefty Larry. So, yeah. hey, guys, I'll see you guys in El Paso. Five shows this weekend. I appreciate the love and support. It's going to be packed. It's going to be packed because not everybody is a fucking cancel culture lefty Larry. After that, we have Brea and Oxnard, California. We're coming in hot. Please share the clips. Subscribe to the YouTube 
hit us up on the uh, Instagram, what did he said? And of course, big, big shout out to all the patrons. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Y'all have a good one. Sass.